What's up, everybody? Today, we are to... Perhaps we reach the inevitable figure singularity of sorts when even the most minimalist and straightforward of pitches finds a way to remind you of other games. That even the such an intended stripped back aesthetic as this familiar and similarity with other games is sure to pop up on the way or another. Maybe it's just the part of the course for the start of the job. It's always beneficial when you can draw on the other games to give readers a better idea. But even with the say it comparisons naturally emerging is there is one thing a game like Biot. It's like to stand alone on the prim release promotion, leaning less on gameplay promise. So it's deliberately duo tone aesthetic and further to that how one can go about tweaking it. As with any all the kinds of the game by Alta slots nearly into the blatant and bent throwback on area of games. Maybe not just 8-bit, but where the developers had to do so much with so little, the novelty of the visuals its developer wants players gravitate to. And here is the ability to switch palettes seemly on the fly. At last, this is the seemly cosmetic and one of the naturally want to appeal to everyone. So it's initially promising that a game like this during an introductory hour or so can remind you of games similarly straightforward in their premise, but who in reality went to provide a cleaner enough hook that meshed well with set setup. So putting the palette sweats focus to the side and for the first hour or so of playing Biota, you might begin to conjure positive but just this reminders. Regardless of whenever or not that was the intention from the developer's side, the idea of burrowing into the setting, involving oneself in platforming, gathering resources, asking them pivotal questions on whenever I want to keep going at the risk of the losing a serve chunk of watch progress, in Willby Kel it quest and return to surface to save, refresh and go again. So Steam World Dig 2 is the game you're thinking up in the introduction and perhaps the personal history of um, helping to color things, but say restriction of visual complexity reminds one of the similar early turns something like Gaboto Roboto. This immediately reminds why is Biota inherit such a curious start. The game isn't exactly pulling any new or uh, original tricks. If anything is boring from a new uh, sources, old school precision platform and light metro divinia exploration are uh, the obvious to suggest its contact working with proven formula. But sometimes simplicity in a hook on itself, there is a elegance to be severed as much respect on top for a developer that doesn't try something too uh, substantial, making sure to cover every base of every type of a player. What that's saying about trying to cater to everyone. Perhaps it's a stern commitment to a minimistic aesthetic where it is general tricks and traps to look out for the effective of execution. Biota can be challenged and respond with poised pain too, and it's because the game comes across sufficiently researched where its brink spots reasonably shine. So it's during the year early parts of the game is the best. When you're cruising, you're both yourself and game for that subtle instant death trap of enemy projectile you hadn't quite deal with. Further proof that the great game designs need to be dictated by excess or showing of technical power, just as I felt with the early parts of Gato Roboto. Biota is the game that plays its hunt early and whistling everything is still really new, it just keeps that peril and actually of uh, slipping up more and more and more exciting. It may be too scratch to claim that Biota doesn't respect its player's time, but at the same time reasonable to conclude that the size back chunk of what makes a good Metro Deviant is sadly a miss here. Moments in the game that require too much direction is wandering, praying that desired objects or quest items land up nearby on top of his because the game is half and half of retrieved steps and precision platforming, the lack of the proper commitment means that any joy to find in either corner seldom lasts for long. Even the satisfaction of surviving even in one of the cycle of hell becomes frustrating when as noted. You are hit slash bang in the face with a locked door or salad exit near the void or constant. If nothing else, then the game, like so many of the late carriers, with a win in the start, the word on context. 
If nothing the less, the game lacks as many of the late carries in the way spring in its tapes make simply moving about to the space breeze control. Even if the very moment on its own, in contrast to someone in the kunai, doesn't feed a way to make the feel of movement a fun little investment on its own. If anything wins out on the basis of repeat enjoyment is the platforming side of Biota, one relieves of deception and utilizing visuals to camouflage the environment. When the exploration aspects left to the side, Biota is satisfying in which it offers up. Tide might be in with the second to spare feeling as the one as forcible speed running and winding, sneaking maze of a level, all while lasers lurk about ready to earn my run. It's something the game could lean more heavy on. Uh, of any of the nostalgical tendencies, this excellency from timing and knowing the move jump is one of the Biota Gators right. At the base providing moments that define a way inside a player's head, a place where a mature mistakes invaluable take the hold. There's just the other part of the game, the needless back and forth down corridors, not mentioning the worry that one even have enough currency to properly progress that suits what should be a clean cut remissing on good old fashioned 2D platform. And in summary, I don't I don't like the biota so much it I had to I guess because I really do like the platformers but anyway I suggest you to try it by yourself the all links I will leave in the description so you can go and buy yourself a biota and enjoy this platform thank you so much for watching have a good one bye bye